then then all this hit me when I was reading the book of Job. And guys, I'm going to read to you the passage right now from the book of Job that just shocked me awake. The reason you're getting this video right now is because I was doing the book of Job video and I read this passage. And as soon as I read this passage, something unlocked in me and I saw all this with clarity. Because I've been knowing a lot of this stuff about Apollo. Greek mythology was one of my passions a long time ago. I took a lot of notes. But I never put all these things together, nor did I put together the things that I'm about to reveal. So, so, so uh, unusual. Here's the passage. It, it was a, uh, it was when Eliphaz uh, had gone off on Job for about uh, uh, a couple chapters. Job then responded to his friend Eliphaz. Cha it was in chapter 16 or 17 that Job said, remember, he's suffering boils. So Job is suffering boils. And he says, uh, talking about Shaddai, the destroyer, the, who Job thought was God. He says, his archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. My breath is corrupt. My days are extinct. The graves are ready for me. That's the passage, but this is what I got out of it. Archers are the sickness and boils that archery, the arrows, archers are, are what Job was talking about. The archers surrounding him. Well, archers shoot arrows. He's got, he's sick. He, he's, he's messed up. He's got these boils. He said, and he says, these archers are, are responsible for cleaveth my reins. This means his stomach sickness. But reins is a word that infers uh, horse symbolism. He poureth out my gall. That's vomiting. He breaketh me, breaking the seal. He runneth on me like a giant, pharmaceutical giant. My breath is corrupt, pulmonary COVID complications. The graves are ready for me. In Revelation 6, it says, after the first seal is broken, then another seal, then hell and death followed. This one sentence by Job is almost prophetic and links us right there to the first horseman. All, all, all the ideas and concepts are attached. I'm not telling you that Job prophesied about the first horseman. I'm telling you that spirit conveyed all that to me through that passage. And it resulted in the study that resulted in this video. So why? Why is it not unusual for scholars to understand that when Job is talking about the arrows of God making him throw up and they're messing up his stomach and, and they, want, they make him want to die and he has boils, why does it not mystify scholars that, that Job refers to these sicknesses as the arrows of God? I'm going to tell you why. Because Job was an oral tradition before it was ever written down on paper, on, on vellum or parchment. As an oral tradition, it's a patriarchal story. During the patriarchal times, civilizations were writing in cuneiform and on, on tablets that were burned in kilns for preservation and then put on racks in libraries, in temples. And back then... When a god was angry with the people, he shot them with his arrows, and many grew sick and died. One of the most enigmatic tablet connections in the ancient world is from Akkad. We don't have a lot of those. Most of them are from Syria, Assyria, Nineveh, you know, Nimrud, Burz Nimrud. Most of them are from Babylon, Babylonia. Some of them are, for, are Sumerian, but the Akkadian ones are, are rare. And we have an epic. It's called by academics as the era epos. And in this era epos, we have a very unique situation. We have 
the God era who is warlike, bloodthirsty. He wants to, he, he's a servant of Marduk, but he's a God himself. And he wants, he wants to put humanity in check. That's all he wants to do. And this ancient God named Anu had created seven subsidiaries who were gods unto themselves. And in ancient texts, they're only called the seven. So era shoots, shoots populations with his arrows and die. But when it's time to go to war against mankind, because mankind's making too much noise, too much clamor, it's upsetting the gods. Era is given the seven to control. And these seven are described as ancient. Their origin is a mystery. They were created by Anu in the old time. This is all in the era epos. So what's interesting is the background is Babylon. Isn't Babylon the subject matter of the book of Revelation? The seven who were created in ancient times by Anu, who was the eighth, these seven being terrifying and destructive and given power to destroy the world. The seven. The seven are feared by the survivors of the flood. This is in the era epos. The seven are feared by the survivors of the flood, and they are said to be a different group than the Igigi and a different group than the Anuna. The word Anunnaki is not found because it's it was a later invention. I tell you guys in my presentations all the time, the Babylonians invented Anunnaki. The original texts were Anuna and Igigi. So uh, this is interesting. This is the era epos. But in the book of Revelation, what do we read? Remember, it's about bringing Apollyon out of the abyss. But in the book of Revelation, in, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 10 through 11, we read, And there are seven kings, five have fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. And he is of the seven and goeth into perdition. These have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast, Apollo, the destroyer. So we find this whole idea of shooting bows is all about creating sickness. That's what it's about. We see right here with perfect clarity that the Greek is talking about absolutely the weaponization of medicine. This is what it's talking about right here. It is talking about the great world ruling power is, is the pharmakai, a goddess who protected a poisoned well, the, pharma, the pharmaceutical giants, that they're the ones in control. Guys, it's all here in the Greek. It's all here in the Apollo, the Hippocratic Oath. Every bit of it's here. Apollo, the god of prophecy, healing, plague, and disease, anciently called the physician. And anywhere he manifests and begins moving among the children of men, there is always this movement to protect the children. What does that mean? Protect them from who? Guys, his wife was Corona, and he's got a crown put on his head. That's Corona as well. His son is the god of medicine, Asclepius. And in the end, his son is educated by Chiron, who's a, who's a white centaur, centaur who is a master of the bow. Yeah, that's who his son was educated by, which means Chiron, the centaur, the riderless horseman, is actually a genius at pharmacai because that's who educated the god of medicine. <clears throat> I swear by Apollo the physician. That's the Hippocratic Oath, guys.